Okay, in this video today, I've <coughs> got a brand new Turnigy battery here, and I'm going to pop this open. The problem with these batteries when you get them from Hobby King is you get these uh, crazy connectors on here, which I don't know anybody that uses these connectors, so we gotta, we got to take off this connector, we're going to put on a Dean's connector. You could use you know, lots of different connectors. I'm still kind of old school to use the Dean's connector. So the first thing we got to do is remove this old connector from the battery. So this just turns like that and it kind of splits it so you get into two connectors. And then my stuff over here. I'm just going to use an X-Acto blade and remove this. Just kind of cut back the plastic on this connector. back the uh, insulation from these connectors that you don't let them touch because you got a lot of exposed surface now and uh, if these touch you're going to see some major sparks and the chance of exploding your freaking light bulb okay so now we have these two exposed connectors now we have to remove these now you could just use a soldering iron to just heat them up and then kind of pull them off but uh, that takes a lot of heat to remove these so I like to use um, a little device here it's my little solder it micro jet I'm just going to heat them up and they'll just fall right off I'm just going to just open here a little bit okay let's take that and heat it up to get too close to the silicone because the direct heat from this flame will burn the silicone even though it's meant for taking some serious heat. Again, you're still going to be careful not to let these touch. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is there isn't that much um, wire exposed for the Dean's connector. I mean, the Dean's connector, you need, you want to use as much of the connector as possible. So you can see that I need to strip off just a little bit more insulation. So just use an exacto blade and just trim off a little bit more insulation here. Now you see now that the wire isn't fully soldered now, so I'm actually going to add a, tin these a little bit better and add a little solder to them. Again, be really careful not to let these touch while you're working on them. Just take a little piece of solder here. Solder melting, and then you just add a little. Make sure you touch the solder directly to the piece of wire where you want the flux and the solder to flow. Lots of solder on there. Okay, good. Sometimes when it comes out of that connector, it's kind of misshapen too. So while you have heat applied to it, try to reshape the tip of the connector so it's not like in a weird shape. Okay, we're going to heat our negative wire here. Starts to melt the solder that's on there. 
Again, make sure you're holding the solder to the section of wire that doesn't have solder on it. I want to put that right on there so that the flux and the solder flow right on the wire. There too. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. So I get my whole wire tinned. So the next thing you want to do, don't forget to put your your shrink tubing on before you start working with your connector. Use an appropriate size piece of shrink tube. This is 10 gauge wire that's been on here. Some of these 5,000 milliamp batteries I've gotten have 8 gauge, which is really fat, but this that shrink tubing still fits on there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to tin the solder on our DENS connector. And you can see on the DENS connector, it's clearly marked plus and minus. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to use a little clamp right here. Nothing fancy, just a clamp that I just happen to have around the house that I've been using this put connectors on for years. And we're going to put the positive on first. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat that connector. Get a little section of solder here. Just clip that off. And we're just going to tin the positive side here first. Get that nice and tinned. A nice little bead of solder on top. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to heat the wire again, get nice and hot. This is really thick gauge wire, 8 or 10 gauge wire, so it takes a lot of heat to get it nice and hot. So I do it down here on the ceramic tile first nice and hot and then I heat my connector a little bit get that melted and then I just hold the connector and let the two solders work together and still it takes a while for it to solidify see it just solidified Make sure you keep, don't let it move while it's solidifying. And this, that looks like a really good connect, connection right there to my positive. Before I start working on the negative, I'm going to put the shrink tubing down. But before I do that, you can see that the this side of the wire is kind of sticking up a little bit here. And I don't like it to be sticking up right there. Um, I'm going to trim that down a little bit. So you need to use uh, an exacto blade and trim it down a little bit. I like to use a little Dremel. And just... I'm going to trim that off a little bit, round it up. That way it doesn't have an edge. You have a sharp edge sticking out to penetrate the sink to them. Good. So you have a nice, nice rounded section. And the solder goes all the way around the connector to both sides and flow really nicely. And it didn't get any overhang underneath. So now we just slip over my heat shrink tubing. I do this now one side at a time. So when I'm putting on the negative, if I accidentally slip, it won't touch the positive connector. Just using a heat gun. We can use a um, lighter, but I recommend using a heat gun. it up real nice and gets your connector all nice and covered. Okay, so there's the positive. Let's go through the negative. So again, we're going to clamp this so that you can see that the Dean's connector has more room on one side. So don't do it to this side. Do it to this side where the negative is. Just clamp it in your connector here. Again, we're going to go and we're going to tin. Tin this side of the connector. Again, apply heat to the tab, and then let the flux and the solder flow over the connector. Leave a nice little tab of solder on the connector. Don't put too much or it'll overflow to the bottom of the connector. And again, I heat the wire itself. 
you know, try and do this as quickly as possible because the wire gets really hot in your hand. If you have to hold the soldering iron there for a long time, but eventually it'll get to the point where it's just too hot for you to hold. Okay, so I got that nice and hot. I'm gonna heat up my connector tab again. Get it nice and hot, warm. And then I'm gonna let the solder flow between those two. Get it nice and hot. Take the heat off. Let it cool. You'll see the color change on the connector itself. There it goes, it changed, so now it's solidified. I'll just inspect both sides of the connector. I'm not sure you can see in here, but let's see in here. You gotta make sure you get good solid connection all the way down to the tab, all the way around the top. And then on this side, you want that solder flow all the way to the other side. And in this case, I didn't get any overflow either on the bottom, which I don't like to get. Okay, so now this one doesn't need to look like it needs any trimming or um, with the uh, Dremel tool. As you can see, by putting it on this side of the connector, it gave you more room so it doesn't stick up. So then we're just going to slide our shrink tubing over the negative. Push that down nice and far. Grab our kick gun. Connect on my battery, and now I can use this Trinity battery. 